morning. It's uh, Robert and Cynthia from Seapoint. Hello. How are you? Uh, we're going to be talking today a little bit about um, kitchen indoor outdoor living. So this is us. There we are. <laughs> Um, so we're going to talk a little bit. We've got some topics to cover today. We're going to talk about um, what is design built? How does it compare to just general contractors and whatnot? Uh, we'll be talking about planning uh, tips and tricks that we have, how to budget for your remodel and what to expect, uh, choosing your materials, cabinetry, countertops, tiles, and then we'll do a kitchen reveal at the end. So why would you want to listen to a company like us, design build firm? Uh, we are a little bit different. Uh, we've been serving Orange County since 1986. We do specialize in room additions, kitchens, bathrooms, whole home renovations, and we have an amazing success rate for um, repeat and referrals. About 52% of our business is repeat and referrals, which is really, really a great uh, milestone to reach for sure. Now we're going to get into planning your project and what that looks like. So here at Z-Point, we make sure that we set realistic expectations as far as the design, the process, and then the build. Excuse me. So you have different options when it comes to remodeling. So you can do it yourself, where you manage all the elements. You're the one, you're your own contractor. The second option is working with a contractor. Um, in this case, you have someone else do all the work, but you are still designing it and doing all the legwork yourself or um, selecting a design build firm where we take care of everything for you. So working with a contractor, you have to find your own architect, your own designer, a structural engineer, um, find your own materials, and then the general contractor will then find the subcontracting for you. Working with C-Point, you would work with us directly and we would um, you have your own design consultant, project management. We manage all of these elements for you on your behalf. So it's a lot less of a headache. So we are a full service design build remodel team. Uh, we give you one point of accountability from start to finish. So we're designers. Mm -hmm. We'd be working with you for the life of your project. Uh, you'd get a designated project manager. We have architects on staff. Mm -hmm. We have structural engineers estimating everything is in-house so that way you're not running around trying to figure out everything it's just one point of contact for everything it makes it a lot a lot cleaner <laughs> so we do always start with a at-home consultation uh, it's complimentary so we come to your home i just drop your name and number in the chat box and we schedule time to come out we mm -hmm. take a look at your space we talk about what you're looking for um, the purpose of the space your timelines vision dreams things like that um, and then we come back to our office and we sort things out going forward from that. Mm -hmm. There are some things to consider when you're choosing a contractor that is right for you. You wanna make sure that whoever you're dealing with has all the proper liability, um, property, either make sure they're bonded, licensed, insured, workers' compensation. Um, there is the cslb.ca.gov website, which you can also refer to, which talks a bit more about all this in depth. Mm -hmm. um, you wanna make sure that you have the right licenses. Um, General liability, specialty, there's different classifications. Again, it's all on the website. Because um, obviously someone who's licensed only in, say, plumbing, you don't want them doing your electrical. If someone's only licensed to do HVAC, you don't want them touching the structural element of your home. So you just want to make sure that whoever you're working with has the right licenses and um, all the classifications that they require. Importance of references. You want to make sure that you've done your homework to make sure who you're deciding to work with that you trust. Uh, C point, for instance, we do have a lot of um, awards. We've won register um, best of Orange County number of years in a row. NKBA. Just want to make sure check the Yelp reviews, house reviews, the actual right. companies reviews as well. You can get a lot of information from yeah. those. Another thing to think about is actually the business survival rate. So this is a fun little chart, and you'll see the arrows pointing to construction. So from when a business begins, this is how many end up still surviving. So you'll see that construction is one of the absolute lowest, mm -hmm. um, but we're still around. We've been around since 1986. Right. So a lot of companies within the first five years disappear. We offer a five-year warranty on our construction because we have that longevity behind us. Mm -hmm. If someone's relatively new, how can they offer that when they haven't even been around for five years? Right. And they may not be around for five years. Um, getting back to this point again, the five-year warranty. So that sort of plays into it. 36 plus years of remodels. We've done 2,800. We have a lot of repeats and referrals. Some clients are, we did their kitchen 20 years ago and they've come right. back to redo their kitchen a second time or they've talked to their neighbors. 
Uh, we do also have to make sure that things are permitted. This is a common question we always get. Do mm -hmm. we need to get things permitted? Um, yes, you do. Anytime you're touching anything with electrical, structural, plumbing, you need to get it permitted. Um, and if it's on the outside of your home, if you're changing anything on the exterior, mm -hmm. even if it's just a window, um, right. usually if you're part of a homeowner's association, you do need to go through them as well. Mm -hmm. Working with a company like us, we take care of the permitting process. We provide you what you require for your HOA because every HOA's restrictions and requirements are different. So we will work with them with you to make sure that you have what you need for them. And we do have to take care of lead and asbestos. This is another common question. Why do we have to do this? My house was built later than the 70s. They actually use asbestos right up into the 1990s in some materials. And it's just a state law regulation that we have to um, test everything. Even if your home was built in 2023 and you decided you wanted to remodel it, it still has to be tested for lead and asbestos. But again, working with a company like ours, we take care of facilitating that and booking it. So when it comes to the design process and factors, there are a few things to consider. So our design and build process, um, as Robert mentioned before, we start with the design consultation. So we meet with you in your home, we gather the scope of work you want done, we go over any questions that you have and a little bit about your design style. From there, we'll schedule a design agreement meeting. So during that meeting, we go through the scope, provide a budget range and go over um, any questions about our process. Once that all looks good to you and we start the process of design, then we select the materials, we finalize the scope and the budget, and then we enter a construction agreement. From there, we would start um, pulling permitting, um, ordering all the materials. So we start off really broad and then we're working our way down to the fine details. And, mm -hmm. and then we work down the permitting, we uh, kick over and we start the demo and then you just sit back and relax and uh, let nature take its course on this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if the, the construction is not an exact science, sometimes there's hiccups along the way, right. um, but it's how those hiccups are handled and how they're resolved. You want a company that's gonna stand behind things and get you across the finish line as uh, smoothly as possible. Mm -hmm. So how much should you expect to pay? That's a very good question. So this um, here is outlining kind of the breakdown of what the cost is going towards. So you can see a majority of that is going to the labor and the installation. Another big chunk of it is coming from cabinetry. So during the design process, these are all factors that we're considering while we're putting things together for you. There's other fees as well to think about, like drywall. It's a, it's a small amount, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. uh, design and project management, um, who's taking care of scheduling deliveries and, right. and the, the schedule of how things are going to be moving along. Flooring, countertops and tile, the fun, the fun pretty parts. Um, cabinetry is a large cost, as you can see. It's around 38% on average. Mm -hmm. um, it's different kinds. Yes, so there are stock options, semi-custom, and custom options. So the difference between those ones, um, we'll go through those. So for a semi-custom cabinet, um, you have expanded choices and style. This is the best value and quality. So this one allows us to do some modification to the cabinetry. They also have a catalyzed conversion varnish, which gives you a really long lasting finish on the cabinetry. Um, and they also come with lifetime warranties. Next option is custom. Mm -hmm. So with custom, you still get the catalyzed conversion varnish. Um, here though, you get unlimited style and finishes. So you have a lot more door styles, a lot more colors, finishes, paint options. Here you also get unlimited modifications. So you don't have to necessarily choose from a catalog. You have a lot more options. This also would be the highest quality for cabinetry. And this also has its own lifetime warranty. So as you can see here, there's many different door style options to choose from, even between the semi-custom and the custom, you still have a fair amount. Another great thing about the cabinets are the inserts and the storage features. So magic corners, pullouts, um, spice drawers, double trash Copy pullouts. Dividers, mm -hmm. yeah. One question we get a lot is, do we um, do we make you, the client, sign the vendors and materials? No. The nice thing with working with a company like Seapoint, um, in that design agreement, meaning you come into our showroom so we can show you around a bit and we can show you what we have available to you. Mm -hmm. um, the, only off, the only thing that we don't access to directly is appliances so we do have companies that we refer for those or you can find your own but as far as the countertops tiles cabinetry everything else mm -hmm. 
we have in our showroom. And if we're not finding the right material or the right one for you, we have access to so many more vendors mm -hmm. um, that we would tap into to find what we're looking for. So no, we don't make you run around to Tile Mile and all the different places and all the stone yards to find the actual materials. We take care of all that for you. As designers, that's how we take on that, that part of the role. Absolutely. There's also lots of different fun options for tiles. So this would be for flooring and uh, backsplashes. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. So we have stone and marble. Uh, there's an example here. Um, very, very durable, natural. You will get a lot of variation in this from tile to tile. There's not a whole lot that, you know, that one quarry might have a different lot than another one, but it's very natural. It's very nice. Does require a little bit more maintenance. It is uh, porous, so it does need to be sealed to make sure it doesn't stain, especially mm -hmm. lighter colors. Uh, fun fact with uh, stones and marbles, the darker the color it is naturally, the more stain resistant it is naturally. But a lighter colored one, you are going to have to stain or um, seal every so often. Next option up is uh, glass. And glass comes in a lot of different fun mosaics. This one actually is pool rated as well. This one has a bit of an iridescent feel to it. Mm -hmm. Glass is nice because if it's a solid color like this, it's all the way through. So if you did manage to chip it, it's going to be the same color. Um, relatively easy to install. You can get glass that's also back painted, so it looks clear on the front and then it's painted on the back side of it. Very durable material as well. This one here, it's you can't stain it because it's glass. And then we have uh, porcelain. Let me grab an example here. Sorry. <laughs> we have a uh, porcelain tile here. So porcelain's nice, it's very, very durable. This is a glazed porcelain, you can also get natural. Um, very, very, again, hard wearing, very durable. Um, this one's a beautiful color as well. And you can also get, which we didn't put a slide in here, there's also regular ceramic. So this is a glazed ceramic, it's a substrate of clay or some other material underneath. And then they glaze the top of it. Mm -hmm. The These are both cost efficient and great options. The only disadvantage is if you did chip one of these, it's gonna be a different color on the underside of it because it is a glazed finish. That being said, we always leave some tiles extra on site. So if that happens down the road, it can be patched and repaired. So you don't have to worry about, you know, oh my God, I have to redo my whole backsplash because I chipped two tiles. No, we would leave some extras for you to take care of for that. Mm -hmm. All right, countertop options. So just like tile, there's a lot of different options for countertops. So one of the first options we have is engineered quartz. So this is a man-made material mixed with dyes and resins. Um, it is non-porous, so it's naturally antimicrobial. It's going to be scratch resistant, stain resistant. Um, you heat do resistant. heat resistant. You get a lot of control on how this material looks. Where if we move on to natural stone, you do have more variation. So with pieces like this, because they're natural and coming from the earth, each piece is completely unique. Um, but here at Seapoint, we, the designer, would find the piece for you and then you would um, go by the slab yard to confirm that selection. This is the only time we would make you come out and look <laughs> at something other than in the showroom is if we chose a natural stone for the countertops. Absolutely. <laughs> and so with this, because it's natural, um, think of it like a sponge. It's, um, you have to seal it. Um, it is really durable. Um, but you do have to worry about, you know, pigmented spices, anything um, like strawberries, oil, want, oil chili, things, anything that has pigment could potentially stain it. Of course, the darker it is, the easier it is to maintain. We also have quartzite. Mm -hmm. So quartzite is a natural material. It's becoming a bit more popular. Mm -hmm. um, it's more limited in its color ranges, but right. some beautiful options for it as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit more expensive than the natural stones and, and, um, and, and, and like quartz. Yeah but it is a beautiful option. Um, another option, which we don't have a sample of offhand here is marble. Mm -hmm. Marble is great for bathrooms, right. um, for kitchens. It's a little bit more risky just because it's very porous. It's very, very soft, so it can scratch easier. Mm -hmm. It can stain much easier. Um, if it's not backed properly, um, marble actually can't support its own weight and can snap. I've seen it happen before. If it's too large of, a, of an area, when mm -hmm. they're setting it, it can actually crack. So. It's good for like little baking centers. You see the picture on the screen. It's a smaller area. Um, but so if you know if you're a baker or something, it's really good for rolling doughs and stuff. But it's not not as great for the entire kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. But this is where quartz is good because you can still get a lot of those looks of marble mm -hmm. without the maintenance of it. And another option that we have, which again, we're not showing on the screen here, which is kind of becoming a bit more uh, newer in the, in the design realm, is porcelain. So people think of porcelain tiles. You can get porcelain countertops now. This Some people still aren't aware of this. 
again, very hard wearing, mm -hmm. naturally pour, um, doesn't have pores in it. The only thing that's a little bit different about it is usually the core is a solid color and the pattern is on the top. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit different of a look for a kitchen where you, if you like this look of the solid color, like a nice band and the pattern on the top, that's where you get the difference. Mm -hmm. If you did manage to chip this though, because the pattern's only on the top, it's going to be a different color throughout. But Just, it's excellent for outdoor use as well. Absolutely. And uh, this can be used in, um, yeah, outdoor spaces mm -hmm. for sure. So Reveal Time, this is a project that I did back uh, last year in uh, Alisa Viejo, uh, Indoor Outdoor Living. So this is the before. Uh, clients just wanted a larger functioning space. They had a peninsula. Uh, you can see that the fridge was kind of in an odd location. The range was tucked in it. So it's kind of the pinch point for both of them. Uh, one was a baker, one was a cook. So they really wanted their own space to do their own thing. They had three young kids, so they wanted to add a dining area for uh, to eat some meals at. More storage space, better flow, because like I said, those appliances are really tight. Uh, they wanted a cohesive and functioning design, and most importantly, they wanted indoor-outdoor living lifestyle. They moved to Southern California. Um, they add, they were adding a pool in the backyard, and they wanted to have that easy flow between the space to have bring the outdoors in. So again, in the before, um, when we first went, they had the back doors in starting the pool area and this very inefficient small kitchen. They had a dropped light well, which is pretty common in Southern California homes. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, the dropped ceiling did not contain anything. Sometimes we have to make sure there's no HVAC in there or if there's a bathroom above. Sometimes there's plumbing from the tub or the toilet above in that area. So we always make sure that we inspect all that before we get started. So this is their existing home. This is what we started off with to see the area that's in the red triangle. So it was the original kitchen. It was the original design um, at a peninsula. It just kind of made the space feel a bit choppy, just to narrow it in a bit there. So they had a family room and the breakfast nook. But when you were in the space, it just, that still would have been too crammed to have that as the breakfast area. area. So we started with the proposed floor plan. This is basically, we removed everything and sort of started from scratch. How did we want to reconfigure the space? We moved the, the range, we moved the fridge. Uh, we kept the sink where it was. We removed the partial wall for where the peninsula was to make an actual island and pushed it further towards the window so that what was the family room becomes the dining area of the kitchen. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also provide elevations. You'll see that these are all uh, dimensioned and coded. This is part of the process with us where we would actually go through the, ca the cabinetry and the layouts with you to figure out what purpose do you want each one? Do you want a stand mixer here? Do you need more baking storage here? Drawers there? Where does the trash go? That's right. part of what you work with us through. Um, this also becomes part of the installation package. Mm -hmm. Then we just start with the color rendering. So we've finalized the layout. We've looked at materials. Now we want you to see what it's going to look like before we start anything. Mm -hmm. So we do color renderings. So you can see we went with a, a nice quartz material all up the wall all around the window, the nice uh, soft green island, all the different perspectives from different angles. And then the other wall. So that wall looks blank, but that's because that's the dining area. So there would be light fixture. There's probably at some point some art on the wall. They also wanted a decorative hutch in that dining area and we wanted it all to be cohesive, but a little bit more furniture like. Right. So we went with the, uh, the green. This is where you can start playing it up. Maybe you could put some glass in that or whatnot. Mm -hmm. These clients didn't really want the glass because with the three small kids, they didn't want to have to keep everything looking pretty. They just needed the storage. Here's the after. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the island. Um, all the cabinetry in here was semi-custom. So it wasn't full custom cabinetry, but there's a lot you can do with semi-custom. Um, the nice white tall cabinets to the ceiling. We raised the ceiling. That light well didn't have anything in it. It was non-structural, so we removed it. So the ceiling's all one height. We relocated the range. They had a cooktop and an oven. Um, they wanted a wall, a pot filler. These are becoming more and more popular. Absolutely. Um, if you want the lot that you have water at the oven, you don't have to carry the big pot back and forth between the sink. You can fill it up there. Or if you're boiling something and it's starting to get low on water, you just turn the tap on and, and you can fill it up again. Mm -hmm some other shots you see that we did the quartz all the way up the wall we really clad this entire kitchen in the quartz for a nice clean look and that's quartz quartz has a lot of movement in it it's nice material to use so that's where you're getting that marble look without the maintenance of marble mm -hmm. and then the pot filler 
Very Gorgeous. clean. <laughs> And this is where it comes that indoor outdoor so they can open up that entire back door it's free flowing mm -hmm. movement for the, the the kids in the house we did put in um, a wood look they wanted a wood look flooring um, but so we went with a wood look tile three small kids water pool it just made more sense to do the tile over engineered or luxury vinyl um, so we put that you can't really see that in some of these photos but we did put a tile floor and that looks like wood we've got the pantry for some added storage by the dining area you can see that they've got the table, nice light fixture above it. <clears throat> Excuse me. It really optimizes the flow. It just feels so much bigger. Yeah. Even exactly. though we stayed in the same footprint. Exactly. So we also have a lot of different storage features that we added in here. So we took advantage of every square inch of this space. So <laughs> to the left of the fridge, put in a slide out um, pantry unit. There wasn't a whole lot of room you could do. And it'd be, to dig in that as a door would have been really difficult. So we did a pull out. We did a lazy Susan in the corner with a pullout as well. So the items you use all the time, just pull right out. And when you don't need it, you just can spin the whole lazy Susan. Angle cabinetry on the other walls to take advantage of the angles in the space and make it look a bit more cohesive. We want to take advantage of every square inch. Exactly. There's a trash drawer in this picture to the right of the dishwasher. Um, that was the most logical place. To the left of the sink, there's a little tiny cabinet, but that was perfect for trays. One of them's a baker. It was a great kitchen. Great. Yeah. They were great clients. They were very open to, to different things, moving things around. Um, and really overall, it, it helped with the flow of their kitchen and the use of the space and just separating those appliances more. You can see the ranges in a different spot, bridges moved. It just made everything much more functional and, and much more uh, much more open. So project like this, how long does it take? And how long does it, how much does it cost? Um, Projects of this nature, it does depend on the cabinetry and, and what exactly we do. This one was heavy on the quartz. Mm -hmm. Normally, you don't go all the way up to the ceiling. It looks beautiful. Um, moving appliances around does add to it. So this one was a bit more. This one was in the in the 130s range, 130s to 140s, uh, 1,000 for this one. And it took probably about three to four months for us to complete from beginning to end. I think it was closer to four months. Um, when you're doing stuff like this, because the island is now separate, there's trenching. We have to get electrical from the main wall to the island, which means going through the floor. If the sink was in there, you have to do the same for plumbing. So those sort of things can add to the time and the cost a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this one was a little bit more just because there was more features in it that were added that aren't necessarily in every single kitchen. Um, that being said, you don't have to do a kitchen where you change everything around. If you like the locations of where things are in your existing space, you can do what we call R&R, &R, which is remove and replace, which is basically taking out the old and putting it back new, same flow, and that's fine too. And that okay. keeps costs under control as well, for sure. So we've got some more before and after photos of some other projects that we will go through. So for this one, um, this is in a condo. So as you can see here, they have a window to the left and then a slider on the right. And so the idea is very similar to the past project we saw is we wanted that indoor outdoor feel to it. Mm -hmm. So in design, we go, th we go through all of this, we inspect it, make sure it's not going to be structural because at times this can be structural. When it comes to condos as well, that's one thing we have to be careful of. Condos, shared walls, townhouses, mm -hmm. anything that's a multifamily situation, sometimes you have to be a bit more careful or limited with what you can do structural. Mm -hmm. Some places will let you, some places won't. Right. This one allowed the door where the window was but they couldn't connect the two because you'll see in the next picture that it's still two separate doors with that bit of wall between that's because we couldn't go wider than what was there mm -hmm. um so we just had to work around that right. and that's common it still came out gorgeous it's still very outside in it just um adds to the flow of the space as well and you'll notice this one that the uh outdoor material is a little bit different um again sometimes hoas or community living like this mm -hmm dictate what happens on the outside of the space. So you can, in some scenarios, move the floor all the way through to have a cohesive look. Mm -hmm. Some HOAs don't allow that. And again, that's where we come in and we work with you to figure out what you can and, and uh, you can't do based on your HOAs and, and, and whatnot. Right. So this is another one. Uh, it was a tight space. Everything was sort of crammed in one area, but what's not shown in this picture, which you'll see in the next one is on the right side of the window, they had a long stretch of cabinetry. It went from here to next Sunday. <laughs> And it just seemed like it was just nothing. So everything crammed in one area didn't make sense. So it was expanded to have the mm -hmm. oven on, on its side. Two sinks. Right. One in the Excuse island, me. one in the back. Mm -hmm. 
This one's a bit more of a modern look. You'll mm -hmm. see that's black and white. Um, the last one was a bit more coastal feel. Right. This one's a bit more modern. Got the thick countertops and the waterfall edge on the count on the island. Here's another one that was, I believe, a um, another condo situation, mm -hmm. but this one did allow for more more um, structural changes to it. So it had a very small kitchen, big run of pantries, but it just seemed very boxed and enclosed. So everything was opened up. They had a beautiful ocean view. Um, they had to keep part of the drop ceiling because of, I believe, HVAC. Correct. The mm -hmm. furnace and whatnot. Sometimes you can or cannot move those. Mm -hmm. um, again, big, beautiful island. Everything's facing the ocean on this one. So this one here, um, as you can see, it feels really dark. Um, it doesn't feel as open. It's a great size kitchen, um, but also this the layout of it wasn't working for this client at all. And you can see here by just rearranging and even just the material selection, it really feels like a different space and even feels larger because it's it's lighter and brighter. And they squared off the uh, peninsula. You'll notice in the previous picture that it was a curve. This mm -hmm. one here is more squared off and it kept a separate dining space, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Another dark one, <laughs> dark and a little bit dated. Still nice, still in good shape, but just a little bit, you know, out of date, a bit more early 2000s, late 90s. Mm -hmm. And they wanted a very Hollywood glam look. They right. definitely wanted more more sparkle and poof and right. lots of mirrors and shine. So it's a very different look. Um, mm -hmm. This is a very unique look. Um, but we showcase projects like this just to showcase that we're not just a, a one trick pony where we do the same thing again and again. Our design team, very wide range of what and we really cater it to you and what your needs are and exactly. your aesthetic another little guy a little bit on the darker side again um <laughs> so for this one um this one's more of what robert mentioned earlier um r and r remove and replace so some relocation um was done for the materials and cabinetry but as you'll see in the next slide we still kept the peninsula it's Things are still in their general space, but it just transforms it just by new materials completely. And you're going to find, even though it's a smaller space, you know, we've got the open shelves, the glass mm -hmm. above the range, or I'm um, sorry, fridge. And that's usually a dead zone above the fridge. Right. So they decided to showcase it in a small space. And, and then like the chevron behind the, you can see in the island where the seating is. Exactly. Just adding more texture and dimension to the space. Exactly. And three tones. You'll notice mm -hmm. this one has wood, white, and blue. Don't mm -hmm. shy away from color. And this one here, this was part of a whole home project, a um, little dark, but they also didn't move too much around. They moved a few things around. Um, the one thing that we see a lot in these kitchens are that desk area on the left and nobody uses them. They end up becoming a dumping ground. So they decided they wanted to use the space a little bit better and it's a beverage center right. instead. Again, very nice clean project, the blue and white, very coastal feel. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this one here, a bit darker, a bit dated, still white, and they like the white. White is a classic color. It will, mm -hmm. it's been around forever and it will be around. But they had it on a raised panel, and this was a bit more dated formal, whereas mm -hmm. they wanted it to be a bit more of a modern formal. As you can see, we kept the soffits in here, so it's definitely something that we can work around as well. Mm -hmm. Keeps costs down if we can uh, keep the soffits. Sometimes mm -hmm. as well. People want to remove the soffits and there's no real reason for it. If you've already got a really high ceiling, mm -hmm. say your ceilings are already 10 feet and they're dropped down to nine, that's still a really great height. Mm -hmm. And it's still a nice look, especially if you've already got crown around the kitchen. This one does not. But if you've already got crown around those soffits, it just is nice to sort of continue that, that Absolutely. feel. And we have another little guy here, very dated, very dark. They had a very heavy island. It was very, very, um, just like a block in the middle of the room. Right. So they wanted to have some seating around it. Still kept the same size. So they still have the functionality of the island that they needed, mm -hmm. um, but just open it up a bit again with the different tones. We're finding that green is becoming popular in kitchens again, but not always that 1990s heavy green on everything. People are still liking that dark green, but it's more in accents and, and pops as right. opposed to the whole kitchen or the countertops. Right. I remember that. <laughs> uh, one question we get a lot as well is, uh, can you get materials from outside vendors or do we do we have to use ours? There are advantages for us to do it for you because we take care of making sure the right quantities are ordered, right. making sure the material arrives the right mm -hmm. amounts. Um, it also helps with scheduling. If mm -hmm. we're not ordering the materials, it can throw a wrench in the scheduling. Um, mm -hmm. We try to keep things on a pretty smooth, smooth track. 
Absolutely. Um, and getting your own materials can throw a wrench in that. Um, we don't say no to it, but it is preferred if you get them through us just because we tend to get better pricing anyway. Um, and it just makes the whole process just a little bit then better. Um, and we do take care of permitting. I don't remember if I mentioned that earlier, but we take care of permitting um, and we take care of what is required from your HOA. Mm -hmm. So you would have to let us know what your HOA requires. Sometimes they need a set of plans. Okay. Um, sometimes they just need documentation, whatever they need from us, we would provide to you mm -hmm. to provide to your HOA. So yes, we do take care of permitting and we do take care of what uh, your HOA does require. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your project. You know, Give us a call, 949-861-3400. That's uh, complimentary in-home design consultation. Um, and yeah, we'll open up the floor if you've got any questions. So we've got a few questions that came in. Um, is adding a bifold door structural? Yes and no. It depends on what's existing in the existing space. Right. If you keep it the same width as something that's there, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be full structural. Um, it can be partial structural. Uh, we have a project right now where the width is fine. We just need to make the header higher to support the door because a lot of bifold doors are actually hung from the top they're not on the bottom so you sometimes need to beef up the header of the structure mm -hmm. so that makes it structural in the sense that you have to beef it up but right. we're not pouring new footings we're not doing new foundations things right. like that mm -hmm. if you're much widening it much wider than what an existing opening is then yes it can become structural um, and how much does this typically add to the cost to a project Again, it depends on the size of the door, depends on the features of it, right. you know, aluminum clad versus vinyl, there's a price difference with that. But on average, anywhere from 20 to up to potentially 40,000, depends on the door, depends on the width, depends on all the features you want in it mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and how do we seal the space? So when you're opening up a big area like this, mm -hmm. how do we seal that so that oh, you don't have, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. so wildlife doesn't get in your house so people can't <laughs> break in. We try to do the best we can. And what we do is it's typically plywood boards. Mm -hmm. um, we make sort of like a little box area. It depends again on the project. Everyone will be a little different. Absolutely. Um, but one that we have on the go right now, they built sort of like a little room area on the inside of the home so that we could work on it from the outside as much as we can until it was sealed. Mm -hmm. and then we took that away so that we could finish off the drywall and everything else on the inside. So we don't leave your home wide open to the elements or we don't leave it wide open for wildlife for people to get in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, we do take care of, of all that sort of stuff. So then mm -hmm. how long is the design and construction? So for the design portion, it depends on the scope. Um, usually it would take about four to six weeks. Um, if we can each meet each week, it takes usually about that long. We don't want to rush you through the process, but we do want to go through all the details together. And if you need longer than that, some clients just need a little bit more time. We don't mm -hmm. want to rush you into that four and six. It can take longer if you need it. And if it's a bigger project, it's just naturally a bigger yeah. scope. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, something like a kitchen or a bathroom, that's usually about average. And then the construction, again, depends on the scope. Um, bathrooms can be, you know, anywhere two, three months, depending on if we're moving anything, if we're reconfiguring. Um, of course, structural projects take much longer. And then the one question we get all the time is, do you need a permit for this? Yes, everything you do, you require a permit for. As soon as you're touching anything, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, structural, mm -hmm. anything like that, you do need to get a permit for it. Technically, you're supposed to get a permit even if you're just replacing a toilet in your home. Mm -hmm. Nobody does, but technically you do. So when you're doing something of this scale, mm -hmm. you definitely want to get a permit. And the permit is not just because we need to do it. It also is a double set of eyes because then it so, triggers yeah. inspections on the property to make mm -hmm. sure things are done correctly. And it also protects you down the road. Absolutely. If you've permitted it and it's something happens down the road, it's different. If you have it unpermitted and something happens later, you can be liable even if you mm -hmm. don't own the, the house anymore. Right. Or if you've sold it and then they have to rip it off because it wasn't unpermitted, rip it out, that could fall back on you. So permitting fees, again, it, the range varies on the project. Um, but in the grand scheme of renovation and, and construction, it's not mm -hmm. a big investment for your protection and for everyone else's protection. So yes, absolutely, absolutely everything has to be permitted. Um, it is actually a red flag for any company that says you don't need a permit. If mm -hmm. someone says we can do this without one, that's don't work with them. Whether you work with anyone else, just yeah. make sure it's permitted. So do we have any other questions that come in? No. Okay. Well, again, okay. feel free to give us a call. Number on your screen. Complimentary in-home consultation. So.
All right. Thank you Thank very you much. Have a great day.